So my welding table is not flat, which is kind of the point of the welding table. Come on. So in this video, we're gonna make the flatness adjustable with a wrench. So this is the welding table. It's made from two and seven eighths pipe for the frame and a half inch plate for the top. I welded the top together from three different pieces. So there's a weld joint right here all the way and there's a weld joint right here all the way. I have those angles underneath just to help stiffen it up through the lengthwise. The challenge that exposed everything. I recently tried the fireball tool challenge. The goal was simple. Well, two square frames under 30 minutes. Flat, square, clean. Easy enough, right? I didn't even get to the welding part. I burned the entire 30 minutes just trying to set up my corners and get everything to dimension. Because on a wavy table, you chase flat like it owes you rent. Fireball tool clamp one side, set it up on the other side. The next, unclamp, clamp. The next, clamp. Unclamp. By the end, I felt like I was playing a game of Metal Jenga with my shaky hands, and zero welds were laid. Let the destruction begin. So one of the big challenges to working on this table is it's pretty freaking heavy and I have a bad back. So my wife would kill me if I messed my back up. So we're gonna have to get a little bit creative to tip this over to where I can cut all those welds up and we can work on the tabletop. Worst thing, I just have to run. So I decided this table needs a full on flatness intervention. Step one, cut the sucker apart. I grabbed the plasma cutter, started gouging out the weld. So I'm having some trouble with the back of my Vivor. It seemed like there was some air coming out of either these threads or the pipe clamp that was here. Classic. Quick fix with the Teflon tape, tighten the connector all the way down and we were back in business. There goes my plasma cutter. Probably wasn't designed for that type of fall. No harm, no foul. Even with the plasma, it wasn't easy. Had to break out the grinder, a hammer, and some serious yelling. Eventually got the plate off and started removing the angle iron stiffeners underneath. That took forever. Something didn't seem right. So I checked and it turns out the plasma tip was melted. Grab the bag from Vivar, put a new one on. Yep, that'll do. Outstanding. All right, so I just got home from work. Let's go ahead and get some grinding done on the bottom side of this table. Probably the heaviest skateboard you have ever seen. All right guys, so I figured something pretty critical out. When you gouge out that weld with that plasma cutter, it leaves a lot of dross. It's really hard to get off. I thought I could break it up with an angle grinder, but that wasn't the case. What I figured out works well is if you take a hammer and a chisel and you work the dross sideways. So you put it there and hammer and you just work your way back to get all that dross broken up. 
and chipped off there, it'll save a ton of time. Building the reaction frame. With the plate removed, it was time to build the heart of the mod. A reaction frame with adjustment, all thread studs that could fine tune the flatness of the top. I measured the lower frame, cut some three inch angle iron pieces with my cold cut saw. By the way, if you haven't used an evolution saw, it's like cheating. And I laid out the outer frame. But problem number two struck. There's nowhere for the all thread to go with this pipe running directly under it. I think I'm gonna use these three, two, one blocks to raise it up one inch. It also allows for adjustment just above the legs, which worked out nicely. Drill plasma repeat. I started drilling the holes for the all thread using my tabletop drill press. It worked great for the first few, then it got really slow like really slow like am i aging during this process slow so i grabbed the plasma cutter clean no functional yep each hole looked a little bit better as i went along we'll call it creative improvement decided to go from nine holes to 12 to give me a little bit more control over this potato chip also i cut reliefs for the center stiffener angles to avoid interference with the pipe frame Frame up and weld on. I clamped up the angle iron, tacked it together, and cut the all thread with my bench top quarter band. Honestly, this is one of the most useful tools in my shop. I didn't expect to love it quite as much as I do. If you have one of these tools and you haven't made a stand for it, make one like this. I'll put the nuts on the all thread on the top and the bottom of the frame and then I'll move the frame underneath my uh, table there and I'll weld each of those pieces of all thread to the bottom of the table and then it should be adjustable at that point. So I've thought about this for a while this morning and I'm really in a conundrum. There's enough deflection in that top plate that my all thread as I, as I bend that top plate around are not going to be perpendicular to my lower frame and it's going to get hung up in the hole that I cut for it. Now the problem I'm currently having is I think my uh, bottom frame, angle iron frame, is going to flex some whenever I use clamps to pull that, that plate up towards that frame. So what I do have is some I-beam out in my scrap pile. So I'm gonna go grab both of those, put them under this table, take my clamps, I'm gonna crank down on my top plate, try to get as much flex out of that top plate using the I-beams so nothing's going through my lower frame. Yeah.
Once I got the top flattish, I welded each stud onto the plate, making sure everyone just kissed the underside. No gaps, no stress. Just enough contact to avoid binding once everything cooled down. Precision eventually. I cleaned up the top using a flat disc and my surface conditioning tool. Some melted fabric from the dolly had fused to the plate during the plasma cutting process. So I brought in the heavy duty tools. The stuff was baked on like lasagna cheese. Then came the real fight, leveling the top. By golly, that's actually working. <laughs> that's cool. This was two solid hours of playing whack-a-mole. Adjust one stud, another corner magically moves. Then the first one again. It was like a steel version of Groundhog Day. Eventually, I gave up on perfection. Used a piece of 17 gauge sheet metal as a feeler gauge, marked high and low spots with a Sharpie, and that kept me from endlessly chasing my tail. I got it close, not machinist flat, but welder flat. The corner under the bench vise is still a little bit wavy and outside that 17 feeler gauge. But the rest of the table, honestly, it's pretty dang good. Victory lap. I hit the reaction frame surfaces with primer and paint to keep the rust gremlins away. Remounted the bench vise, sat back, admired my slightly less wavy metal child. Now I've got a service that's flat enough to actually build on. That means it's time to take on the fireball tool challenge again, but this time with a table that won't sabotage me. Next time, it's personal. Coming up next, flat table, fresh setup, and hopefully two square frames under 30 minutes. Will I beat the clock or chase squareness into madness again? Subscribe if you haven't. Ding, 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 ding and yell some suggestions at the screen. Not that I'm gonna hear them unless you put them in the comment section. Now, go build something. Some suggestions. Dig it on, dig it, dig it on. Holes, good book, good movie. No, oh, but this thing broke. So now I'm gonna have to just hold you. Quokas. Hashtag Quokka Selfie. Do I look cool in my glasses? Daddy! Come in, buddy. It's my son's birthday. I better go.